Drinking water that's fresh, clean, and crystal clear is something many of us take for granted. We might not give it a second thought, but between the source and our tap, a lot happens to make that water fit to drink. Our water may come from Mother Nature, but it's far from pristine. It starts its journey to the treatment plant through a water intake pipe. On the wall of that pipe, about two meters down, is a 15 centimeter hole. Covering that hole is a metal grill designed to keep out large debris such as tree branches. The water flows to a pumping station where it goes through a preliminary screening. A giant revolving screen removes fish, garbage and grass. Once they remove the debris, a low-pressure pump moves the water into the treatment plant. The untreated water, called raw water, is dirty and smelly. So they first add a powerful form of the chemical element carbon, called activated carbon. It absorbs contaminants such as solvents and pesticides. That rids the water of bad taste and odor. From there, the water then goes through a series of mixing tanks. The first tank holds a chemical called aluminum sulfate. It acts as a coagulant, a substance that thickens liquid into globs. In the raw water, the aluminum sulfate forms tiny sticky globs called flocks. Bacteria, mud and other impurities stick to those flocks. Then the flock-filled water moves on to the second mixing tank. The second tank holds a chemical called polymer, which is essential to the next step of the process, called sedimentation. Five pipes inject the water with superfine particles of sand, called microsand. The polymer coats the sand, making it sticky. The grains of sand then stick to the flocks in the raw water, weighing them down even more. The water then flows into a settling tank where the flocks, because they're heavier, settle to the bottom. You can see the result in this demonstration. The water is finally clear, but it's far from drinkable because it's still full of bacteria, viruses and other organic matter. So on to the next step, filtration. The water flows onto the top of the filter, then trickles downward, passing through a layer of anthracite, a type of coal, then through a layer of sand. This filters out any remaining particles, which then flow to the middle. But the water is still teeming with bacteria and viruses, so it has to be disinfected. They add 1.9 milligrams of chlorine per liter of water, enough to kill off those germs and bugs. They add a mineral called silicate, to prevent calcium buildup from blocking our water pipes. The treatment plant sends water samples to government inspectors who continuously monitor the water supply to ensure it meets safety standards. The amount of chlorine remaining in our drinking water is 0.6 milligrams per liter. The chlorine gas the plant uses is highly toxic. Should any leak out, emergency teams would have to evacuate a 10-kilometer radius. So the plant stores the drums of chlorine in a high-security area. It's taken about 45 minutes to turn raw water into treated water. Now these electric motors will pump it through underground pipes right to your tap. <laughs>